it's everything from nation state hackers actually uh, destroying vaccine production capability, hacking groups for research and stealing. Uh, frankly, the smallest problem we have is intellectual property theft. The biggest problem is people wanting to make entire countries and products look bad and disinform an entire population and disenfranchise them from taking a vaccine. We've seen everything from a weaponized attack on the European Medicines Agency in December that then took the data, modified it to disenfranchise people and then release it about a month later. I'll let you guess who did that. We've seen uh, hospitals uh, get attacked and go down and go back to paper and pen for a month. Uh, we've seen uh, vaccines uh, supply and manufacturing just completely go down. And this is a very small subset, right? We've looked at 18 months. This is a small group of those. Number two, um, everybody and their mother seemingly is having a field day. We have governments, we have cyber gangs, we have individual hackers are all having a field day. Um, the news in the top left is from 2017. This was a bit of a salvo, and that was not a targeted attack. If you remember, not Petia was substantially aimed at something else. It attacked Merck. They actually uh, claimed a loss of 1.7, 1.3 billion dollars worth their insurance in the in the end. It almost took down Maersk. But we've seen North Korean hackers actually try to smash and grab and destroy, deploy ransomware, and and literally like destroy capability to produce and to research this vaccine. No, thank you. Unfortunately, uh, this is compounded, and this is something that unfortunately is not really being talked about very publicly yet. All of the tools that we are using in biopharma are completely insecure. Completely. It is rotten to the core. There is not a single bone in this. We have done many private responsible disclosures, and uh, I'm only scratching the surface. It's, an, it, it's a living nightmare. I mean, it's what it is. So here's a, uh, here's a headline from yesterday. Gas shortages worsen fuel prices spike after colonial pipeline ransomware attack. Be ready for these headlines to look very different. Probably tomorrow, probably the next day. It's going to be vaccine shortages and new variant cases are going to spike. Look, the, this disease is here to stay. We'll have more pandemics in the future. We have just crossed a Rubicon, right? Um, and uh, the entirety of the world's biomanufacturing infrastructure can basically crumble overnight. So please help. <laughs> please freaking help. If you're in government, uh, fund targeted assessment of critical bioinfrastructure. This is not a tomorrow problem. This is today. We need to go in and go fix these issues. We are dealing with acute, I am dealing with acute uh, vulnerabilities that are being attacked daily. Please help there. Uh, also, we created a nonprofit, the BioISAC. ISAC stands for Information Sharing and Analysis Center. They exist in other fields. We didn't have one for the bioeconomy. It now exists. If you know of companies in the biopharmaceutical or biotech or agriculture space, please route them here to become members so we can share threat intelligence. And then on the philanthropic funding, if anybody is feeling uh, uh, you know, keen to help to actually try to prop up this industry and not the industry, but really the cap capability to produce vaccines until we can fix uh, the underlying issues. Uh, please contact me, you've got the info at the bottom. And that's it. I told you it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs>